Welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. We're going to do catching up on Kaka'ako this morning. And uh, we're going to talk about community and what are the community considerations for catching up on Kaka'ako right now. And for this discussion, we have Kofono Maili Ili, uh, who is Native Hawaiian, who is, um, let's see, a musician, a surfer, and a minister. Did I get that all right? Yeah. Yes, sir. You did. <laughs> well, what would you like to add so people know who you are and what you're about? Uh, well, I uh, I attended the University of Hawaii um, and got a bachelor's degree in Hawaiian language and a uh, uh, former hula dancer, professional musician, um, uh, singer, songwriter, artist, uh, now serving the Lord and, um, and still surfing at the uh, Kewalo Basin. <laughs> Point Panic, right? Uh, Point Panic and across the channel as well. Okay. Mm-hmm. Great to have you on the show, Kapona. Uh, nice Kapona, to be here. You know, Kaka'ako is the subject of our discussion. Uh, can you tell us, um, you know, your familiarity? I mean, aside the surfing, uh, how familiar are you with, um, you know, Kaka'ako Makai? You know, it's it's been something that I'm currently uh, learning more and more about. Um, I, uh, I started surfing at the, uh, at the Kewalo Basin, uh, park, maybe back in early two thousands. Um, and, uh, since, since then, um, it kind of, I kind of got involved with, uh, um, a group called the friends of Kewalo just from, uh, conversations through conversations. And, uh, I was able to learn about what more about what they do uh in terms of um that place and kind of watching over and uh um that area and caring for that place and so I, i'm still learning about that that area um i've also been trying to research uh, what that place name is and what i've come up with is um that area is actually referred to as kewalo kai um and it's uh ahupua'a that actually goes all the way up the mountain um and so yeah you know i'm still 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 learning about the history of that place but it is something that's very special to me as i've uh, spent uh, a lot of time there getting to know the people um also caring for that land uh you know fighting for for no um parking meters in the kewala basin park parking lot uh so that the park users can enjoy the free access uh, I'm not having to park uh, and pay money to enjoy the park and all of that stuff. Um, but it's a special place. My my kids go there. Um, we have uh, different family gatherings and the people there are just, uh, you know, there's a lot of good people over there. And uh, we want to just make sure that that area is something that the public can enjoy uh, for a lifetime. Yeah, you're talking about uh, the park at uh, Kaka'ako Makai. With mm-hmm. the, the walkways, it's, it's very, yep. it's very beautiful. Mm-hmm. So, um, hey, it's a special area in more ways than one, though, because uh, it's the only uh, shoreline um, green green area uh, of its kind uh, near the city, uh, and you know, effectively, it's uh, it's backed and surrounded by these high rises. How do you feel about you know? Um, the park as a green area, uh, a green area in a city of high rises. Uh, I absolutely, I absolutely love that. Um, you know, we, we can learn about, we can learn a lot from our history. We can also learn a lot from what took place in Waikiki. Um, you know, they, they spent millions of dollars trying to plant trees on Kuhio Avenue. And then it was too low. And so they had to spend more money to take out the trees because they were hanging too low. Trucks were hitting them. Um, And the reason why I say that is if we look on Kalakaua, they also spent money to beautify a place that in its natural state is already beautiful. Um, So when I look at Kaka'ako Makai and I look at Kaka'ako Park and I look at how much grass uh, or greenery is available. I mean that there's the beauty. We don't need to change anything. We just need to care for that place. 
Um, and it's, it's, it's what I call like a breath of fresh air mm. uh, to be able to, to have that, um, you know, again, surrounded by buildings. And, and as we've surfing at, uh, you know, in that area, Ala Moana, all the way to um, Kaka'ako side, you know, as we've been surfing over the years, we've just, uh, we've had a front row seat to all of these high rises coming up. I mean, at one point you could count over 20 cranes, you know, um, as these high rises started to come up. And so um, these spaces are, are, are important. Um, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's good for your health. It's good to be able to get out and have that, that access to, um, to, like you said, that just fields and just, you know, nature outdoors. So uh, it's, it's really important uh, that we care for that place and make sure that um, as much as we can, that it stays that way. You know, part of sense of place, I think, I'm interested in your thoughts about this, is that you can see the mountains and you can see the ocean. Um, and right now, the way Kaka'akamakai is, it's a park. You can see the mountains and you can see the ocean. Mm-hmm. And if you build um, large buildings there, you won't be able to see the mountains from many places in Kaka'akamakai, and you won't, you won't be able to see the ocean from many places in Kaka'akamakai. How important is that? Uh, so you, you mentioned something, uh, that uh, sense of place. Uh, and I'm going to kind of put that into a Native Hawaiian perspective. Um, what what I hear from from different different people saying different things about sense of place. Uh, many times I hear that in terms of something external, like uh, you know, the Hawaiians need to have a sense of place. For example, the you know in the new legislation that's coming out um, in regards to to OHA, um, you know, some of the commercials they're putting out is. Uh, for a uh, plan development um, called Hakuone, mm. that um, in which in their commercials they say, you know, we want to give Hawaiians a sense of place, and so that that for me is really tricky because, you know, I, I I really feel that we need to empower the Hawaiian community to have that sense of place right here. I I am Hawaiian. I do not need something else to determine that for me. Whether or not, you know, like, oh, well, you know, if we have this place, then Hawaiians can feel more at home. Then we can have a sense of, uh, you know, being and, and whatnot. No, I, I, I don't I don't feel that personally to be true. Um, um, I, I think we should do a better job as a Hawaiian community empowering uh, these, you know, the Hawaiian people to say, hey, man, you are Hawaiian, whatever you do. Uh, don't forget that it's in your upbringing, it's in your bloodline, it's in the way you were raised, it's in the things that you were taught. Um, so whether or not you live in a high rise or you live in the country, it doesn't make you any more or less. Um, and sorry if I'm kind of just going at oh, it that's okay. this because <laughs> because uh, yeah, you know the sense of place is kind of it's a tricky it's a tricky thing you know for me the way I view it and um, but uh, but I see what you're saying and uh, back to back to seeing having that. You know, this is a unique place because, um, like you mentioned, Malka to Makai, you know, that's that's the example of Ahupua, where everything from the mountain to the sea um, is related. Uh, we're not all fishermen. We're not all farmers. Uh, we, we all have our role and our, our, our niche. And um, again, taking it back to community, we help each other to live and survive. And, um, and so uh, watching all these high rises, I mean, it's just... It's just sad. It's just really sad. And um, of course, we know with the infrastructure of the sewer and and all of that stuff here in Hawaii being really old, and the more you pave streets, the more you make water raise when there's big big rains, um, and that water has to go somewhere, and it goes down into the ocean. And uh, we see that firsthand when we have these sewage spills out in the water and this and that. So. Talking uh, about cont- contamination. Contamination. The, the places contamination. where you surf, no. In places where we surf, yes, um, yep, and also the ground, the ground contamination, um, especially in Kaka'ako. Um, there's something that uh, was brought to my attention about um, 
the contamination that's already sitting in the ground. So to develop in that area, that's a whole nother story. And I don't have, um, I'm not up on exactly all of that information to continue with that, but I do know that there is uh, contamination um, over there in the, in the ground. So something else that needs to be uh, addressed as well, moving forward. As, I mean, the environmental issues. The environmental concerns. Yep. Um, you know, uh, I believe that even Kewalo Basin used to be uh, somewhat of a landfill. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, that's that's another concern. Once you start digging up, you know, that's something that we got to take a look at and the cost so, and all of so that. The, stuff. the issue right now, Caporno, is uh, whether a particular bill should pass the legislature um, to yeah. allow, effectively allow. Now, right now, the law, you know, prohibits the uh, residential uh, and high-rise development in Kakakomakai. Um, right. And there's a bill that OHA put in to reverse that and to allow them to do it. And uh, um, they want to build a high-rise. They want to they extend the height limit, too, to 400 feet. That means 40 stories, 40 yeah. stories. Um, mm -hmm. And it means a condo right on the water. So if we... If we take all that into consideration, we compare that kind of condo to other mm -hmm. condos elsewhere in the city, especially those close to the water. We're talking mm -hmm. about multi-million dollar prices. It, you know, it's too early to say, but it's going to be multi-million dollars for every mm -hmm. condo, every unit. Mm -hmm. uh, my question, Capono, is could you buy one of those? Could you live there? W would you have the money? Um, you know, that, <laughs> that's a great question. And, um, the thing is it's, it's pitched towards affordable living. Uh, it's, I mean, how, how does OHA plan to make money, uh, for its beneficiaries, um, putting out something that is affordable. And then even that is a loaded when, when, when you say affordable housing, what is affordable housing? Um, so that's, that's, uh, yeah, that's something that to me, it, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. And to answer your question, if I can afford that, no, I can't afford, I can't afford a million, million dollars. But more importantly, if we look at the Hawaiian people, um, is, is that what the Hawaiian people, uh, the people of Hawaii need, you know, the native Hawaiians, do they need to be in a high rise building? Uh, is that is that like a top concern? Housing, maybe. But again, another question. We have Hawaiian homes that should be providing uh, housing for the Hawaiian people. So for OHA to get involved in, in the housing, um, it's just, I, I don't know, it, there's some red flags. There's some concern um, there because changing with, with this bill that's out, they want to change, as you stated, from 200 to 400 and then allow residential building on the Makai side of Ala Moana Boulevard. Um, now, when they change that, uh, if, if it should go through, then what that does is that doesn't just grant OHA the ability to build. It also opens up to any developer who wants to come in. And now, before you know it, that what we just talked about, that green, that place of uh, uh, where we can come as a family and just enjoy nature is going to be surrounded by buildings uh, even closer, you know. And, and then what we also know from history and from different areas of the island as they're developed, you know, as, as we see when people develop, um, and then again, especially in the places that are more well off, uh, what happens is the ocean access is restricted. Um, then there's an, a sense of entitlement to the area where, well, we paid this much money, and so um, you know, you, we we don't want we don't want people accessing the um, the ocean through this pathway. And then we we've, we've seen there's so many countless um, countless stories of gates going up in in easements, public easements to restrict action uh, access to the waterfront. Um, and I I mean, if again, if history could teach us something. It would teach us that that those things happen all the time. They've been happening, um, and so that's something that, as um, as a, a a board member of Friends of Kiwalo, um, you know, we 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 want to keep this place for the public enjoyment for the people of Hawaii, uh, everybody, 
to be able to come down to the waterfront and just enjoy themselves, bring their family and, uh, you know, again, um, for the rest of their life, as long as, as long as, as long as possible. Right on, Capono. So, so right. So many points you've made. So what about Friends of uh, uh, Koala? Um, you guys made a, a, a plan or a suggestion for how development should go. Can you talk about that? Yeah, it's called, um, let me, let me get this right here. Let me just pull this up. It's called the Marine Ocean Research Recreation Education Center, uh, or as we call it, MORE, M-O-R-R-E. Um, that's a great plan that was kind of uh, devised by one of our members, um, along with um, a few other people. Um, his name is Tom EY. He is the he is a former. Let me see here. How I don't want to mess this up. He uh, Thomas EY. He is a former state of Hawaii aquatic biologist, specializing in aquaculture and natural resource development. Um, he's also a board member of Friends of Kiwalo. Um, and they've come up with uh, something that is very special. Uh, we've also we've also started to look into some research in regards to the aquarium, the Waikiki Aquarium. Um, we're looking into what they've done well and where where we can improve on and um, trying to draw some similarities and then of course make something um, as what we're proposing maybe maybe even better. Um, so we see in the future that this would benefit education uh, with schools and field trips. You know, I have three kids, so um, we're, we're constantly going on field trips, but also it will educate the public, um, all the visitors. It's an opportunity uh, to generate money, uh, a steady stream of income, um, at the same time teaching people uh, about the native fish, about um all types of things regarding uh, the ocean, water. Uh, we even have something in the works of uh, um, trying to build a man-made reef uh, to start, um, you know, bringing fish back and um, into that Kakaako area. Mm -hmm. um, and so, basically, what it is is it's 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 a it's somewhat of an aquarium, uh, but an educational marine again marine. Um, Ocean recreation. Um, I, I I should remember this <laughs> research recreation education center. You know, and so uh, we have uh, we have some renderings of it um, up, and it should be up at friendsofkiwalo.org soon. So if anybody needs to go take a look at that, and uh, um, we want to encourage you uh, to do so and see what else, what other options there are to high rise. Um, to building high rises in that area. In any event, it would be low rise and there wouldn't be um, a residential component to what you're talking about, right? Correct, correct. Um, yeah, I mean, I can kind of go off on this subject in terms of the jobs that it would bring and keeping our, our local, our, our Hawaiian community um, here, offering jobs, opening up jobs, creating jobs. Um, one, one thing I've heard from Another another friend that we have uh, that we're working alongside with is uh, Robert Richmond, who is the research professor and director um, at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Um, and he's the director of the Kewalo Marine Laboratory. Uh, so he's been able to, he's, he's been a great asset um, to thinking and brainstorming and also providing uh, helpful, extremely helpful information um, in order to develop something like this. So we're excited to be working with him on this yeah, project good, as well. Good. It all sounds positive. But um, what, so what is your view, your position on the OHA project, the 400-foot development they want to do there and, and the bill they have in, in the legislature to permit them to do? What, what's your position? Um, what's your, what would you say to people on what should be done here? So. What it looks like is, and this is this is my strictly my my opinion, uh, from a Native Hawaiian standpoint, looking in, um, it, it seems as though they want to capitalize on the booming market in in Kaka'ako Makai, uh, Kaka'ako, uh, and so they want to they're trying to generate funds uh, for the beneficiaries or for the Hawaiian Native Hawaiian community by 
building high rises um, that they can then turn around and sell. Um, what I've learned in, in business is that if you have a steady stream of income that will outlast uh, these big numbers as they come in, because once you spend it, that's it. That's all you have. Um, so, you know, and then when I look at what would, how would those buildings benefit the native Hawaiian community? Again, I mean, we're talking about, it comes down to numbers. Who's going to be living in there? Because if they're trying to generate money, then how are they going to offer affordable housing? Um, and so I, I think really they're just, uh, there's, there's other options. Um, there's other options to, to get the outcome that they're looking for. I believe what they're looking for is to generate funds in the long run to, um, to benefit their beneficiaries, which is the Hawaiian people. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I, I'm not, I'm not on board with that, with the, with the building of residential, even, even, even for OHA. Um, yeah, I think there's a better way. Okay. Maybe, maybe you should run for the trustee position. What do you think? Oh, oh, I, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe people have been saying, been, been, been saying you, you're, you're just another person that has, <laughs> that's something about that but uh, i'll let the i'll let the lord and uh decide my steps <laughs> and uh, you know, i'll take thing, that up Kipono, you said that uh, this was your view but you also said and it seems to me that you are um, an active member if you will of the native hawaiian community mm -hmm. um by by virtue of your you know your your um uh, your job in the ministry by virtue of the people you know and the people you you know, touch base with in, in the Koala organization. Mm -hmm. And so my my question is, uh, you do talk to people. I know you do because you're an affable, friendly sort of fellow. And you probably talk about this with them. And I want to know from your point of view, what others in your community, the Native Hawaiian community especially, what do they think of this project? Uh, what's the general consensus among the people you know? Uh, wow. Tr truthfully speaking, there's, um, I mean, and I, I don't believe that this is a secret, but there is divide amongst the Hawaiian community, you know? Um, and so how do we, how do we close the divide? How do we close, how do we get people on the same page? Um, how do we get people to, in any compromise, there's give and take. So how do we come to that point where we can understand have a good understanding, grasp the concept or the knowledge of something so that we can come with our opposing views, and, but still come to a good outcome where we both may have to, you know, um, again, coming back to give and take. And for me, I think it's really educating, um, it's educating the people. I, I, I know firsthand that when we dealt with this, because this bill was we we did the same thing with this this bill that came through last year again, and so the people on the OHA side, um, and again, even saying that it's more division. You know, I don't like to say that, but um, the people on the side of OHA um, and the people who follow OHA, what happens is, and this is just in general with uh, I, I believe this generation nowadays, and because of social media, we'll see something and we'll take that as fact, and we won't research or read up on anything. So. So when I speak to people, there's people who've read up on the bills. There's people who are engaged, who are searching answers. They'll have one thing to say. And then there's the people who, um, you know, and again, with this native Hawaiian, there's a lot of issues there. So there's a lot of people who are just flowing on emotion, uh, flowing on the, you know, like, well, they just want to decide what we as Hawaiians can do this and that. That's not necessarily the case if we, look into what exactly is going on and, um, and leave our emotions um, as much as possible on the side so that we can think clearly and then come up with a, a, a good solution, then um, I think that'll put us in the best place. So to answer that question, I get, I, I, have, I have both sides. I have, I have both sides. And my, my, what I try to do when I speak to people is uh, to just educate, educate them on the side that they may be lacking. And me being in a Hawaii, uh, native Hawaiian, um, I can, as much as possible, as much as I know, I, I can educate both sides. Um, 
Um, again, not that I know everything, but what I do know, I'd like to share on both sides. So the, the sides who aren't Hawaiian, you know, I have a view that I can I can share with them and hopefully it's something of value. And then the Hawaiian side, I say, hey, man, well, you know, that's not accurate to uh, what Friends of Kiwalo or what this development is standing for. And uh, as friend, as a board member of Friends of Kiwalo, we're not against the development or the res- building residential. We just want to keep the Makai side of Ala Moana Boulevard um, open for public use and as green and free as possible without obstruction. Uh, so if they if they, there's other options where they can relocate, um, then then awesome. We want to support that. Um, but I hope that answers your question. It's kind of a roundabout, but uh, I get I get both sides. Yeah, and, and the side you're on is, is the thoughtful education side rather than the uh, social media, buy whatever they're selling on social media. As much as possible, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Capono, great to talk to you. And I'm, I feel like I would join your church already. Um, hey, you're always welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today. On Think Thanks Tech for Hawaii. having me. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.